Hi everyone, we're back at the Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'd like to welcome my next guest in, Victor Cabayon, the Superintendent of Central Falls Schools. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here. So this is now officially your third school year at the helm, is it? That's correct. I'll be starting my third year as superintendent and excited and ready for it. Now, how ready is Central Falls? I know you're trying to get the schools ready. We've seen that there was a lot of issues that, you know, buildings needed, you know, repairs and the roofing. Are the schools good to go? So the good news is that we were able to do a lot of the repairs that we needed to. We're doing over $3 million worth of repairs to um, all of our buildings, but mostly concentrating on the high school, yes. our middle school, and our pre-K center. And so we're very happy to see what's happening and the fact that we're getting all of these um, repairs done. We've been working with um, Mary Diosa in the city of Central Falls. It's been very supportive. Ride and the school building authority have been very supportive. So that's the good news. Now, when you start doing construction projects, always things tend to pop up. And so we have some, one of those things that, that happened, and it was um, at the high school when we began to do the, um, the repairs on the roof. Um, the roof has been leaking and all, so we knew that there were some issues, but when we began to uncover some of that, it was worse than we expected. Mm -hmm. And so right now, the roofers are working uh, you know, against the time to get us in, in, um, in school for next Thursday the 31st, is, which is when our students come back. Um, and so initially we were looking at having a delay probably of the library opening. Okay. So we knew that um, we were not gonna be able to get to that section, but we can do, you know, and, and um, our school is uh, fully online, all of our students at the high school have one-to-one -one devices, so we were gonna be okay. Um, now it may seem that I may have to close down a larger portion of the high school, so a section of the second floor, and we're gonna have to move some classrooms around. Again, we we're, have a plan in place where we have enough spaces to move the students away from those areas. So I think we're going to be ready to open just in some different spaces. Okay, so being pl plenty flexible and start date for the high school. Uh, August 31st, uh, Thursday, um, all students at the high school, um, we're going to be ready. Um, you may have a different room this year for at least two to three weeks to, um, to begin the school year. So that's been the biggest sort of surprise um, in this work. But again, it's been great to, to receive the much needed repairs and now that the money is flowing from the legislature, the governor's office, to ride, to the schools, that's what we are happy about. Um, and you know, we get to uncover these things in a proactive way, not you know, something coming down and then you have to fix it, but it, this way we were able to find it in a proactive way and have a plan in place to fix it. So you've got two years under your belt. Do you feel the most comfortable you felt going into a school year? Does every school year sort of present its own <laughs> set of challenges? Yeah, I, mean, I was ready and everything was going according to plan until you know, two or three weeks ago when the roof decides to give us that news. But overall, I, I do feel ready. I have a really good, solid team of administrators. Um, we have a good, solid team of teachers and staff, um, a very uh, veteran uh, group of teachers and staff that have been doing this. and so. I feel like we are in, in good shape to get back to school. Uh, most of our buildings are ready. Um, I've been meeting with all the principals this week and we don't have you know, many issues um, outstanding. So having done this a third time, it feels much better. Yeah. <laughs> and talk with us a little bit about the role of sort of the, the PM school. You know, for mm -hmm. those students who are you know, looking to get their degree, you know, sort of the older students, talk to us about the role of that sort of in the overall picture. Um, you know, how many students take, take part in this and how successful has it been? So we began um, about six, seven years ago when I was at the high school as a transformation officer with a team of um, teachers and staff from the high school looking at what's happening with the students after their fourth year and for whatever reason they're not able to make it. Mm -hmm. And the reasons were everything under the sun. You know, some of them were needing to leave to go to work. Others just fell behind and never got a chance to catch up. Others have um, children's responsibility, et cetera, et cetera. And so we said we can you know, continue to let them just go out the door, or we can create programs to bring them back in with a little bit more flexibility. Mm -hmm. And so think about it, you know, when, when you go to college, the plan is four years. Sometimes we take five years, sometimes we take six years. So we took that same approach, and what we did was we invited the students back, and initially it was just an invitation. Come back to school, we have a plan where you're gonna be able to get your uh, require a number of credits and we will help you graduate. So students um, took us up, teachers also uh, stepped up and said, you know, I will work an extra, you know, two or three hours in the afternoon to make sure that the students reach their goal. And so over the last 
five, six years, we've had a PM school program that has been very successful in attracting um, students who need to work during the day, students who have parental um, responsibilities, students that fell behind, students that just a traditional day wasn't working for them. And so every year we have approximately 30 students um, that take advantage of our okay. PM school program. And it's been very successful. They, um, they know that the rigor is still the same, so there's nothing, you know, the work is still there. Um, it's just offered in a different way, offered um, with a little bit more extra time, so they go at their own pace. But the, the work gets done, and we've been happy to see that our graduation rate, you know, from uh, 2010 till today has gone from 48% to you know, close to eighty percent. So, so, so far, so to good. The, the PM school, in part, yes. in part, into a number of other initiatives, um, to a number of other things. But that's one part of it. And so, 2017-18 school year, anything new to be looking at Central Falls that you think folks might want to know about? Yeah. So one of the one of the big things that we've done over the last two or three years, um, we have a, a good foundation of some of the programs, but we started looking at our curriculum. And so over the last three years, we've changed our math curriculum. Um, we now added a new curriculum for writing, um, a reading intervention program we've added last year. And um, this year we're really focusing on the tasks that the students are doing in the classroom. And so we're adopting a program that's been very successful in Washington, D.C. called Cornerstones, which what it does is really give students a lot more hands-on, a lot more authentic um, experiences. And we want them to share their learning with a more authentic audience and so it's not just a paper to the teacher it's not just filling in sheets but rather doing presentations mm -hmm. having parents come in going out and presenting to the mayor to leaders to the peers to and so we're really adopting this um, approach mm -hmm. to make sure that our students have authentic ways of demonstrating their learning so the cornerstones is one thing we're rolling it out from k to eight this year and then also the high school is revamping their uh, ninth grade um, uh, program. We have a new ninth grade academy that's going to be rolling out. Uh, we're working with um, a number of partners. It's going to be a lot more technology based, a lot more project based learning. So we're really excited about now getting to the instruction. So Central Falls, we've had a lot of you know things in the news, but finally I think we're being able to get to instruction, which is where we really should be focused on. So the focus on ninth grade, you talk about the cornerstone being in K-8, is that just such a pivotal year for students coming into high school for the first time, sort of being faced with older students, a lot of challenges, is that really a, you know, a, a pivotal year for students from what you say? Yeah, the transition from eighth to ninth <laughs> is critical. And so we know that if they have a trans successful transition into high school, we are much more um, likely to keep them, retain them, and make sure they graduate on time. And so we're putting a lot of emphasis on the social emotional side of a ninth grade experience. We're making sure that the uh, opportunities are more personalized, that the students have opportunities for exploration, and that they are really able to um, have more direct connection with their teachers. And so we are really looking to personalize the ninth grade experience because research shows, and we've seen it in Central Falls, if we can get them through that ninth grade into 10th grade successfully and on track, the, the path for 10th, 11th, and 12th is much easier. So, you know, how do you balance the, the cornerstone projects that sort of hands-on learning with the demands placed both state and federally for standardized testing? The state's always trying to wrestle with what type of standardized testing to use, looking at, you know, a shake-up again. How does the role of standardized testing play in the classrooms? And, and talk with us about how the, how the teachers juggle that. Yeah, and so, you know, we, we look at um, learning, and that's why we want to move to sort of more of this authentic learning that students can see the connection between what they're learning and application, see that what they're learning matters. And so when you have those connections, students are much more likely to be able to retain information, to be able to show the application. And so the learning is much more internalized than just being able to give back, you know, dates and, and, um, and, and places. And so we are happy to see where the state is going in terms of this testing program, mm -hmm. not sort of saying we're going to measure you on just this one test and that's the end all be all. Um, we are happy to see that at the high school we are going towards um, the PSAT and SATs, which our students are already doing, is a track to college. And so we feel that that's a much better way to uh, provide students with uh, something that they need. They should take their PSATs and their SATs. Yep, free. 
free. Yeah. Yes. Have you yes, seen yes. an uptick in numbers since this was so made we've possible? Been, yeah. So we've been doing the PSATs free in Central Falls for a number of years. So we've been doing that. And now the SATs, not only the free, because a lot of our students will receive waivers, mm. but the fact that it's done in school, the time that we have them, yeah. you know, they don't have to go off anywhere on a Saturday morning and we don't know if they're going to go or not. <laughs> we have them there, we do the <laughs> test. Sit them down. Yes. <laughs> and so the numbers this year were much, much higher. Um, and so we're happy to see that that's how, um, one of the factors for how the state's going to be looking at um, the progress made and the improvement made at the high school. So when you talk with folks and you talk about Central Falls and, you know, folks aren't there, spend time in the schools, what are the unique challenges facing both teachers, students, um, you know, throughout the school year? Yeah, so one of the things with, um, with Central Falls, we have a number of families that are transient. And so that's one of the first challenges that we see that our families are in constant movement. And so the good thing is we have a staff that's ready for it, that's able to adapt, that's able to welcome students mid-year, that's able to sort of prepare students to move forward. But that's a challenge when you have sort of that transient population. But that's the story of Central Falls, right? We're a gateway city. We welcome the new immigrants into, into this country and so But it poses a challenge to us, um, and so we have to be ready for that. We also have a community that um, obviously faces some economic um, struggles. And so when you know mom or dad are working two or three jobs then the time that they have available for the children is, is more uh, restricted we have problems in terms of um, some of the access to a social capital and so if you're in providence if you're in, a, in a, one of the cities that has um, uh, you know an uncle and an aunt and somebody across the street and down the mm. that graduated from college that can show you that can be a model we don't have a lot of that in central falls and so the social network in central falls is kind of the challenge the economics are a challenge but what we do have on the positive side is a lot of very hard-working families um, we have a, a very um, a lot of perseverance um, children that you know have difficulties at home whether they be um, issues of uh, mental health, we have issues with domestic violence, whatever they may be, those students come the next day ready to learn, ready for more. And so that grit that our students exhibit, that um, humility that our parents have, that hard work and drive, that's on the positive side. So Central Falls also has a lot of positives that we capitalize on. And this year, one of the new programs that to capitalize on that is our focus on uh, healthy Central Falls and so we're doing a lot with our physical education program with looking at healthy eating healthy habits um, we are um, looking at how we utilize sort of our bodies as you know you have to keep your body in shape to make sure that you keep going and so we're gonna have a great um, emphasis on our healthy Central Falls we're working with um, the mayor in the city um, they have also a, an initiative that um, Blackstone uh, Valley Community Health uh, Center is working with us on. We have a clinic right at the high school okay. for our students. Over 500 of our students at the high school are patients, and so they just have to go right downstairs to see a doctor if they need it. So all of that is really happening over the last two or three years, and so that focus on healthy Central Falls, healthy mind, healthy bodies is something that we're really ramping up this year. And did I see Spanish classes for teachers and professionals in Central yes. Falls? How's that going? So we started off actually with classes for our principals. Um, they came to me and said, you know, majority of our families speak um, Spanish. Um, and so we want to be able to at least communicate with them in the mm -hmm. initial conversation, show them that we are interested in what they have to say and that I'm willing to sort of make that extra uh, effort to welcome them in Spanish. And so can we do some classes? So I've heard this over the last couple of years, and finally, some of them started taking classes at the library. Some of them came to Providence and said, you know what, we could do this right here. So we opened up a class, and we had our principals and some other directors that um, started taking the class. So already, um, now we have teachers who also want to take the class, and so we're going to be offering um, classes in Spanish. And for some of us that speak English and Spanish, we want to do some classes in Portuguese Creole because the Cape Verdean population is growing in Central Falls and we want to be able to now have us also connect to that population. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we stand here. It's the 22nd. You said high school opens on the 29th. 31st. 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 Yes. What's your week look like getting ready for the school year? So we are the last, next couple of days just working with principals and with our directors to make sure that all the systems are ready. Um, teachers report on Monday okay. and we'll spend a uh, day orientation. Teachers are already coming in to get their rooms ready 
and then we have two solid days of professional development. This is actually a, a great thing to, to comment on. We have um, over 100 workshops being presented over two days in Central Falls, everything from instructional practices to uh, enrichment opportunities, social emotional, cultural responsiveness. It runs the gamut. We even have Zumba classes for um, some of our teachers are presenting it. And so over 70 presenters, some from outside, a lot of Central Falls teachers presenting for one another. And so we're very excited about those two days. And so that's how we're getting ready for back to school. Sounds like I want to sneak out from the yes. local studios and head over to Central Falls and take yes. some classes out there. Well, wanted to just touch base with you. I know you've been there two years. You know, folks always want to keep an eye and see what's going on in Central Falls. So I wanted to provide folks an update here. So I'm glad that you were able to come in. Gosh, we've covered the gamut. Is there anything that we didn't talk about that you think folks might be interested to know? Yeah, so one of the things this year, we want to be very public with the work that we're doing. Um, and so taking opportunities like this one is um, some of the things that we want to do. We want to be very active on social media, letting people know this is the work that's happening. Remember that the schools in Central Falls are paid for by all of us in the state of Rhode Island. And so we want to make sure that people in Rhode Island know of the improvements that are happening. We want to make sure that people know of the challenges that we have and how we're addressing them. So this year we're going to be very public in the work that we're doing in Central Falls. So look for us on social media. Look for my Facebook page, Superintendent Capellan on Facebook. And that's where you can get more news of what's happening in Central Falls. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I know it's a busy schedule getting ready for the year, but as you said, Wanted all of Rhode Island to know what's happening in Central Falls. I'm sure we'll have plenty more to report in the coming year. So, Superintendent Capayan, thank you for taking the time to come thank in today. Thank you so much. I'll let really you go back to the task at hand. I'll let you go around the corner and I'll finish on up here. Ooh. Here you go. Thank you again. <laughs> Central Falls Superintendent Victor Capayan in the studio to tell us about his now third year at the helm there, what they have planned for their students. Some challenges in the schools themselves, talking a little bit about what they found in the high school, how they're looking to remedy that, moving some things around as they are looking at getting ready to start the school week next week, talking about embracing some uh, uh, some opportunities learned from Washington, D.C., talked about the cornerstone learning for even younger grades, K through 8, uh, and of course, as he said, wants to make sure it's very open and accessible. Social media wants to bring it right to the people what's going on there in Central Falls. A lot of folks getting ready to head back to school. Wish all the families and students well as they're doing so. I was glad that we were able to get Victor Capayan here in studio. It was great to have his perspective.